ESPN's Mike Clay projected the entire NFL season. And depending on how you feel about quarterback Sam Howell and head coach Ron Rivera, you're either going to hate or love what he sees coming for Washington. That and more on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome into your Friday episode of Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. And don't forget, you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. And you can continue the conversation with me over on subtext at joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders where you can go one-on-one with me because i'm your host david harrison d harrison 82 on twitter credential member of the media and washington commanders beat reporter for commander country sports illustrated's fan nation site covering the washington commanders with you here every day monday through friday along with our everydayers as always everydayers those of you who come through for every episode never missing a single one i appreciate your continued support for the show today's episode just a little bit late because i was really busy uh on thursday with inside the wizards covering the nba draft but dropping this here for you on friday heading into the weekend on today's episode of locked on commanders we're going to discuss fantasy rankings and player projections for key commanders players according to mike clay of espn but before we get into all that i've got to tell you that we are brought to you today by bird dogs go to birddogs.com slash locked on nfl and they will throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style. There's the logo. There's the words. Uh, Tumblr with every order. This thing is pretty amazing. Kind of well worth uh, the cost of anything that you would buy over at birddogs.com by itself. And you get it for free. We're starting today's episode discussing team projections from ESPN's Mike Clay uh, and what he sees for the Washington Commanders this season. And then we will get into specific player projections and his fantasy rankings. We'll contrast them, compare and contrast them to uh, what fantasy pros He's coming up for some of your favorite Washington commanders. Now, if you dislike Sam Howell as the starting quarterback, if you don't think Sam Howell is going to be the future of the franchise or the final solution to the quarterback position, if you don't want Ron Rivera around for much longer, you're going to like what Mike Clay has to say. If you feel the opposite, then you're not going to like what is about to come because Mike Clay does not see a lot of good things in the Washington commanders future. And I'll put some of these up on the screen for you if you're with me on YouTube. Uh, If you're on audio, um, this is uh, basically a numbers themed ending to the week here uh, on the program. So again, if you need to, if you need or want to see these, uh, some of these numbers in person, go ahead and head over to the YouTube version. And I've got some slides put together for you guys uh, to kind of uh, digest these numbers a little bit easier. So looking at schedule projections, Mike Clay went through and he gave each team kind of a win and loss percentage likelihood uh, per game and the biggest win probability highest win percentage that he gives the Washington commanders this season comes in week one versus the Colt McCoy led Arizona Cardinals giving Washington a 64% chance of winning that contest their highest loss probability is week four at Philadelphia where they beat the Philadelphia Eagles previously unbeaten Philadelphia Eagles on Monday night football last season Uh, Clay gives them a 14% chance, the commanders, that is, a 14% chance to win. Uh, They've got one game with even probability, 50% chance uh, to win, 50% chance to lose week 15 against the Los Angeles Rams. And uh, that 50% chance to win is actually the second highest win probability uh, of the season, according to Mike Clay, because this team has 12 games under 40% win probability. So only two games, 50% or better. The rest of them are all under 40% or, or, or well, under 50%. And then 12 of them are under 40%. Those 12 games that Mike Clay uh, gives the Washington Commanders less than a 40% chance of winning are week two at Denver, week three versus Buffalo. Again, week four, we already discussed. Week seven at the Giants, week eight against the Eagles, week nine against the Patriots. Week 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 is the bye week, 15 is the 50% chance game, 16, 17, and 18, uh, 40% chance or less. He projects that the Washington Commanders will get swept by the NFC East division. And I want to make sure that we're important here. These aren't predictions, right? They're projections. So there's a little bit of a nuance there. 
Uh, he's not predicting that the uh, Commanders will get swept by the NFC East division, but he is saying that every single game these Washington Commanders play against the NFC East is going to uh, involve the Washington Commanders being an underdog team. Now, of course, Mike is doing this full season all at once, uh, you know, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, he also gives the Washington Commanders the eighth hardest strength of schedule, which is certainly uh, contributing to the to the low expectations that he has for this team. And, and uh, Mike specifies that that is based on 2023 rosters. So he looked at the current rosters, not at the uh, 2022 standings. Typically, when you hear strength of schedule numbers, uh, it's people taking last year's final standings and projecting them out to this season. That's not what Mike did here. He uh, he took each roster and basically weighted them himself. Uh, they've got the hardest schedule in the NFC, and because of that, they've also got the hardest schedule in the NFC East, and he projects the Washington Commanders to win 5.2 games, which obviously is five games because you can't win 0.2 games. Um, and if you go back throughout the week every day, as our FanDuel reads, the over-under on FanDuel.com uh, for Washington Commanders wins this season is 6.5, so Mike Clay would be taking the under on this. So if you agree with Mike Clay, uh, you want to hit the under there on FanDuel for season wins by the Washington Commanders. And he only projects them to score 17 points per game. I think it was like 17.2 or something uh, points per game, but 17 points per game scored by this offense. That's not very good. Uh, they are projected, according to Mike Clay, to have the second pick overall in the 2024 NFL Draft. One pick behind those Los Angeles Rams, the 50-50 uh, win-loss probability. So a win against the Los Angeles Rams apparently catapults the Rams to the number one pick and puts the Commanders back at number two where they last uh, sat and took Chase Young back in 2020, which uh, that is, of course, one of the teams that they're projected to win against. The other uh, team that the that the uh, commanders are projected to be favorites against are the Arizona Cardinals, who will have the third pick, according to Mike Clay's uh, projections. That gets three NFC teams at the top of the 2024 NFL draft, six teams on the schedule uh, for the Washington Commanders. Talk about that eighth hardest schedule, six of the teams on their schedule are projected to uh, to become playoff teams, the Bills, Dolphins, Eagles, Niners, Seahawks, Cowboys, which, of course, means eight games this season. So basically as close to half as you can get in a 17-game regular season will be against teams that will eventually make the playoffs since you have the Eagles twice and the Cowboys uh, twice as well. Uh, Clay also, so not a good season for the Washington Commanders, according to Mike Clay. Uh, fortunately, his projections don't lock anything in, so this team still has the opportunity to prove Mike Clay and anybody else wrong. Uh, unit grades, looking at unit grades, uh, he gave max scores of 4.0, lowest score is 0.1. And here's uh, the, the the clearest reason that Mike Clay doesn't have a lot of confidence in this team. He gives the uh, quarterback position group for the Washington Commanders a 0.1, literally the worst score that he could possibly give them. Uh, they are the lowest scored quarterback room in the National Football League, according to Mike Clay, even over the Injured, probably not playing this season. Kyler Murray and Colt McCoy led Arizona Cardinals room. Hey, that's, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the best one goes to the Kansas City Chiefs with a 4.0. He gives the Washington Commanders running back room a grade of 1.5 out of 4. Not the worst, not the best. The best goes to the Niners. The worst, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, the wide receivers, 2.9, so a little bit better. Uh, the worst wide receiver room goes to the Tennessee Titans. And the best one went to the Cincinnati Bengals. The tight end room, this is actually a position group. Uh, that we've been a little bit uh, excited about every day, as you know that. He gives them a 0.5, uh, which I don't know that's fair. I think I'd probably go with like a 2. I don't know. Um, but the Dolphins have the worst. The Chiefs have the best because Travis Kelsey is that dude. He also gives the offensive line a 0.5, which it's hard to, to expect anybody outside of Washington to have a whole lot of confidence in the offensive line given the shuffling and uh, the fact that we haven't seen them. Uh, go up against live competition yet the best grades for this team not surprisingly come on defense the best overall grade not surprisingly the interior defensive line Jonathan Allen Duran Payne leading a group that could say 3.5 so 0.5 points less than the Giants who actually have the top score uh, in the NFL the Cardinals have the worst so week one that makeshift offensive line going to go up against the worst interior defensive line in the NFL that's got to be a plus right uh, the edge group Chase Young Montez Sweat and company getting a three out of a possible four points, the Chargers were the best with four. Uh, and then the, the safeties and the cornerbacks each getting two out of four points. Uh, and then the linebackers getting 0. 0.6, which uh, the fact that the linebacker group is lower uh, than the tight end group, that's a little surprising to me. So, so those are some of the team projections and team grades that Mike Clay uh, gave to us. And I think every day, as you already know, I think this team's going to win more than two games. And again, 
Clay's not predicting two games, right? He's projecting two games. There's some some nuance to that. Uh, so I'll take the over on what Mike Clay is projecting. Uh, certainly more than two games, more than five games even. But let's get some other over-unders going as we take a look at Mike Clay's player projections again from ESPN. That's coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode of Locked On Commanders is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs make you look so good because their stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. These shorts do the exact same thing uh, as Lululemon, but they fit way better, and they fit better than your standard shorts made of stiff, restricting cotton because Bird Dogs are made of cloud-knit fabric, something Bird Dogs invented, so you can have clothes that look like khakis but give you a slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Plus, Bird Dogs use anti-stink, sweat-wicking fabric to help keep you cool and dry all day long. I am recording this episode in a pair of Bird Dogs joggers that I owned long before Bird Dogs uh, was sponsoring us this go-round, but I do have my shorts, and I do obviously have my custom uh, Bird Dogs tumbler here. If I can get the logo turned the right way, boom, there it is. Uh, very, very much uh, enjoy this thing. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NFL for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NFL for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Thanks again for being a locked on commander's your first listen or view today and every day. Every day, again, appreciate your continued support for the program. Next week, come back. We will be here for at least four episodes. I do have a trip I've got to take to upstate New York this weekend. If I get back in time, I will drop a Monday episode. If I don't, unfortunately, I won't be able to, but I will at least bring you episodes Tuesday through Friday next week, if not more. So uh, just uh, wish for a speedy and successful trip, uh, and we can see if we can get you a Monday episode. Continuing today's episode, not a lot of success expected from ESPN's Mike Clay for the Washington Commanders. But well, within those individual or group struggles, rather, there could be some individual performances that come out positively. Let's look at some player projections and let's start it off with the quarterback position, specifically quarterback Sam Howell, who is projected by ESPN's Mike Clay to play in 13 games. In those 13 games, he is projected to complete 280 passes on 448 attempts. That is a completion percentage of 62.5%. Throw for 3,042 yards, which is 10.9 yards per pass completion. Throw 14 touchdowns, a 3.1% touchdown ratio, and a tw- and 12 interceptions, which is a 2.6% uh, interception rate. And he projects how it will be sacked 35 times. He also projects how it will get 66 carries, 296 yards, which is average an average of 4.48 yards per carry. Uh, will get two rushing touchdowns and will be one in 12 as a starter with the lone win coming in week 15 uh, against the Los Angeles Rams. So if Howell plays 13 games and he's playing in week 15, well, so so Clay didn't project Howell to win week 15. That's that's my own uh, addition to this, so I suppose. So I suppose there, there's uh, some context that should be added there because he obviously projects Jacob Brissett. Uh, if, if Howell is only playing 13 games and Brissett is going to play the other four, I've basically come to the assumption that if you predict the veteran quarterback is going to start the young quarterback uh, or the, the veteran quarterback's going to play four games, the young quarterback's going to play 13, then you likely believe the veteran will start the season. So that's why I say week 15 uh, against the Los Angeles Rams. But that's not Clay's projection, supposedly. So uh, Jacoby Brissett is projected to play four games this season, go 87 for 139, which is a 62.5% completion rate. Throw for 911 yards, which is a 10.5 yards per pass completion uh, rate. Four touchdowns, which is a 2.8% touchdown percentage. Three interceptions, which is a 2.1% interception rate, and get sacked 10 times. He also projects Brissett will have 15 carries for 67 yards and a touchdown. That's 4.47 yards per carry, and will go one in three as a starter if I'm right, and he's got Brissett starting the season. The lone win would come against the Arizona Cardinals in week one, and then he would have three back-to-back-to-back losses at Denver, at home against Buffalo, and in Philadelphia. Um, I think there's no way that the commander score less than 18 points per game with Hal. Again, going back to it, he projects that the team will score less than will score 17 points per game. Uh, but if they score 18 points a game with Hal and lose every game from week five before to before week 15, uh, I don't I don't see. The commanders not flipping back to Jacoby Brissett. 
So let's hope that's not a situation that we see. Uh, but again, more of an example of the national narrative surrounding Howell. Nobody really wants to give Sam Howell the benefit of the doubt. Meanwhile, you know, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, some of these other rookie quarterbacks, guys like Desmond Ritter. Desmond at least has, you know, more games in the NFL of experience, but a lot of young, unproven guys getting a lot of benefit of the doubt. Howell, not so much getting the benefit of the doubt. But I know there's some Commanders fans also who don't necessarily believe that Sam Howell can do the job. We'll all find out. Whether you believe or you don't believe, we will all find out if he can very, very soon, relatively speaking. So that's quarterback situations. Move now to the defensive line uh, because obviously we have a lot of eyes on specifically the defensive ends, Chase Young and Montez Sweat. And according to Mike Clay, Chase Young is projected to have seven and a half sacks, which would match his career high from his rookie season. 51 tackles would be a career high. He also projects Montez Sweat will get seven sacks, which is the third most in his NFL career, and 46 tackles, which would tie him as for the second most tackles in his career. The seven sacks projected to Montez Sweat, if he does earn those, will give him five or more sacks in every NFL season in his career. Now, other defensive linemen, defensive tackle Jonathan Allen is projected to come away with six sacks and 72 tackles. Uh, those sacks will be tied for fourth most in his career, and the tackles will be a career high. Deron Payne projected to have seven sacks, which would be second most in his career, and 66 tackles, which would be also uh, a career high. So my question really, and we go back to these, these defensive end numbers, my question for you all, so if you're on YouTube, uh, please drop your answer in the YouTube comments. If you're on audio, uh, hit me on Twitter, email, subtext me. If you're not on subtext and you want to text, go join subtext.com slash locked on commanders, and you just text me your answer directly. Uh, but either way, you know, if you look at these numbers, obviously Chase Young comes away with more sacks, comes away with more tackles. But given the lack of consistency out of Chase and the amount of consistency from Montez, if these are the numbers, which defensive end do you bring back, Chase Young or Montez Sweat? I'm very interested to see uh, what you all think about that. But for now, we're going to move on to the running back position. And Brian Robinson Jr. specifically projected to have 195 carries this coming season, 797 yards, and four rushing touchdowns. Also projected to get 26 catches, 184 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Antonio Gibson also projected on here 102 carries, 407 yards, three touchdowns, 47 catches, 327 yards, two touchdowns. So no surprise that uh, you know Antonio is getting more receptions than B. Rob. And, and if I have to go over under on these stats here, I'm gonna the over stat that I'm gonna take is Brian Robinson's rushing touchdown. So Mike Clay projects that he's gonna get four rushing touchdowns. I think I'm going to take the over on that four. I think B-Rob gets at least five rushing touchdowns this coming season. And then if there's a stat that I feel like is too low, I think it's going to go Antonio Gibson receptions. I think this year there's going to be a bigger focus on Antonio Gibson being a receiver out of the backfield. We might see him lined up, uh, split out a couple times here and there. Um, and 47 receptions, not really many more than he had last year. I think there's going to be a real focus on getting him involved in the passing game this season. So I think 50 receptions is a reasonable Target. Now, I kind of went with a, a little bit of a pick I'm not going position group by position group for everything, uh, but I kind of added some players that I wanted to look at for you. And then I'm going to start here with wide receiver Terry McLaurin. Uh, Mike Clay projects Terry to give 75 receptions, 1,003 yards, and four touchdowns, but he's not the only receiver I looked at. I also looked at Jahan Dotson, and uh, Mike Clay projects Dotson gets 63 catches for 868 yards and four touchdowns. Logan Thomas, remember, he's really low on the tight end room compared to what most of us seem to be uh, on the tight end group and what this offense is going to mean. He projects Logan Thomas to have 47 receptions, 472 yards, and three touchdowns. Those receptions, if I remember correctly, will be the second most in Thomas's time here in Washington. And then cornerback Emmanuel Forbes, right? We, we all have been talking about this. They brought him in to be a takeaway guy. Mike Clay projects him to come away with 1.7 interceptions which obviously isn't possible. So you're talking one. You can't really round up to two necessarily. Uh, but, you know, uh, he would be third most in interception projections, according to Mike Clay. Um, Kendall Fuller and Derek Forrest both have higher interception projections this season than the rookie. Uh, he also projects Forbes will come away with half a sack and 67 tackles. 67 tackles would be seventh most on the team. So from that group over under uh, the over stat, I'm going to go Emmanuel Forbes interceptions. I think that, you know, you draft a guy to come in here to be a ball hawk. He's already shown in minicamp, rookie minicamp, OTAs, that he's definitely got that ability. We'll see what it looks like when there's pads and real competition as far as contact and hitting and all this other stuff. But I do, I can I can see Emmanuel Force coming away with two interceptions this season 
Uh, certainly understat, I, I suppose. I'll go Forbes tackles, right? I mean, he actually looks really smart, intuitive as a tackler. I think he's going to get a lot of half tackles. You know what I mean? I don't know how many solo tackles he's going to get, especially against some of these bigger receivers and, and, and running back. Like if it's A.J. Brown versus Emmanuel Forbes, he's going to need a little bit of help probably uh, to bring him down. But I, I can see Emmanuel Forbes hitting the 70 tackle uh, threshold. So there's some player projections again from Mike Clay at ESPN. How does all this production stack up in fantasy football land? Well, Mike Clay also ranked these guys in fantasy relevancy. So we'll talk about that coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Wrapping up today's conversation about ESPN Mike Clay's projections for the Washington Commanders and their players. And we're going to turn the page now to fantasy football uh, and look at some fantasy rankings again, according to Mike Clay. And, and the good news is if you're a Washington Commanders fan, it looks like you're not going to need to worry about your your favorite players being drafted too early ahead of you. It's just about getting them at the right time. I'm going to break this down uh, by highest position group rating. So that's a little bit different, but uh, tight end number 20. So 20th overall in their position group is the highest ranked commanders player. And that is, of course, Logan Thomas. Tight end 20, 47 catches, 472 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, in 12 team leagues, you need 24 tight ends drafted, uh, presumably, right? You want to draft a starter. Usually you want to draft a backup uh, to stash one that doesn't have the same bye week as your starter. So if that's the case, then Logan Thomas is certainly a draftable wide receiver, uh, according to these numbers, in 12-team leagues. So tight end number 20 for Logan Thomas. Terry McLaurin comes in uh, second highest in his perspective. Position group is wide receiver 26, uh, according to Mike Clay. Uh, it's, and he's at, he's projected against 75 catches, 1,003 yards, four touchdowns. He's also projected for 25 Rushing yards, I mean, most leagues is what 2.5 points additionally. So, you know, not much of a kicker, but a little bit of a kicker. Uh, and and again, in 12 team leagues, you're gonna want to draft at least 48 wide receivers. Uh, I think every team is gonna want to have at least four when they come away from the draft. Fantasy Pros has Terry McLaurin listed as wide receiver number 20, so that's six spots higher than Mike Clay. Uh, so take that for what that's worth. Uh, Sam Howell's quarterback 29, according to Mike Clay in fantasy value, 3042 yards passing, 14 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Uh, an additional 296 yards rushing and two touchdowns. Uh, you're going to want 24 quarterbacks in most fantasy formats. So see, I'm how kind of on the outside looking in as far as draftable guys. But if you feel like Mike Clay is underselling Sam Howell, then maybe you want to take that late round flyer on him. Fantasy Pros also has him at, at quarterback 29. So Mike Clay and Fantasy Pros uh, agreeing on Sam Howell's fantasy value here. Brian Robinson Jr. is the highest ranked fantasy running back for the commanders, running back 34, according to Mike Clay. Uh, again, almost 800 yards rushing, four touchdowns, 26 catches, 184 yards receiving, and one touchdown uh, catching. 48 running backs in most 12-team leagues. Again, you want four running backs, two starters, two backups. Traditionally, Fantasy Pros has B-Rob as running back 32, so two spots higher than Mike Clay has him. Antonio Gibson, according to Mike Clay, is RB 37 with 407 yards rushing, three touchdowns, 47 catches, 327 yards, and two touchdowns. Uh, also adding in there, right. And, and this depends on how your league scores, but Mike Clay does project Antonio Gibson to return 30 kickoffs, have 699 yards in kickoff return yards, uh, 0.2 touchdowns. So he doesn't project him to return a kickoff or a touchdown. But if you get points for special teams contributions on your individual players, which is kind of a rarity, but if you do, uh, that might be of, of value to you. So again, Mike Clay, has Antonio Gibson RB 37 fantasy pros has him RB 36. So very close in projections, but fantasy pros a little bit higher than Mike Clay. Uh, Jahan Dotson, according to Mike Clay is wide receiver 38 uh, the, for his 63 catches, 868 yards, four touchdowns, no rushing stats projected by Mike Clay for Jahan Dotson. I will tell you right now that that is wrong. Jahan Dotson will have rushing stats. I'm not going to tell you he's going to have a lot of rushing stats, but he's going to have some rushing stats for what it's worth. Uh, Fantasy Pros has Jahan Dotson as their wide receiver 41. So Clay at 38, Fantasy Pros at 41. Close, but still uh, not 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 as close. Uh, wide receiver 64 is Curtis Samuel. So certainly on the outside looking in from a draftable perspective, if you buy the projections, 52 catches, 530 yards, two touchdowns. Also has Curtis Samuel with 153 yards rushing and a touchdown. Fantasy Pros is actually lower on Curtis Samuel than Mike Clay is. Fantasy Pros has Curtis Samuel's wide receiver 
72. I got to tell you guys, uh, Jahan Dotson at 38. I mean, if you can get Jahan Dotson in round 12, 13 or so, that is, to me, that's going to be a steal. Curtis Samuel, uh, you know, you don't want to stack too many Commanders players on your roster, obviously, but depending on your receiver outlook, Curtis Samuel, you know, is he worth a, a last round flyer? If, if he's still there in the last round of your draft and you've got kind of a bench spot open that you want to just kind of take a flyer on, I think Curtis Samuel is certainly worth the investment uh, at this point in time. Hopefully, most of your fantasy drafts aren't starting until midway or even the end. My money league, we draft after the final preseason game. So all the training camp injuries and preseason game injuries and all those stuff, all that stuff can can uh, get out of the way, unfortunately. But if you do have an early draft, I know some leagues draft as early as July. So if you have an early draft, there are some projections for you, according to Mike Clay and Fantasy Pros. Coming up next week, we are going to be back again at least four days uh, next week. I'm going to try to get you a fifth, a fifth day on Monday. But uh, I may not be able to, so I just want you to be aware of that right up front. Uh, but I do need your questions. So one way or another, we're going to have a mailbag episode on Tuesday. So I do need your questions. I've still got some questions loaded up from previous episodes. But if you want to add to the mailbag, uh, we're, always, we're always accepting submissions to our mailbag episodes. You can send those in. Uh, always a good time. If you And if you want to send them in, drop them in the YouTube comments. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. And or you can email me on lockedoncommanders at gmail.com or send them directly to me via subtext. And don't forget, you can talk commanders with me one on one. Just heading over to join subtext.com slash locked on commanders. Greatly appreciate all the subtexters out there. You've been uh, very amazing, very great uh, to help start up my day most days. As always, thank you so much for making locked on commanders your first listen of the day every day. Every day, thanks again for coming back and coming through on a consistent basis like you do. Thanks so much for making me a part of your day, a part of your football routine. And if you have anything else Washington Commanders related you want to know or discuss, hit me up on Twitter at tharrison82. Until we speak again, please be safe, be kind, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. <laughs>